Okay, so this is the last perk for 2020, and we're rounding out the year with our friends from Everyday Espo. Joe, take it away. Thank you so much, Therese. And uh, so the last two presentations we did were very much general marketing, but this is really a uh, bit more of a, what's it called? It's a bit more of a specific look into one aspect of the types of services that we offer and what better way to talk about both Everyday Espo and Everyday Studios, which is our second uh, company, by giving you a little bit of an inside look into our creative process. We call it life through our lens. So just a quick recap of the last presentation. Um, when I had Andrew with me back in July, we talked about content towards the end, there were three different types that we discussed as visuals to showcase your business because everyone knows that visuals can tell a story and it's better to show and not tell because then you're getting that second element of people being able to understand everything about your business. So graphics, photos, and videos fall under that. And now graphics can cover a wide array of uh, different marketing materials. For instance, say you have a brochure, a business card, flyer, or anything like that, even a postcard mail-in. Uh, you need some sort of graphic to show that off, and that's kind of where that falls in. You can also use graphics on social media, and you can create a graphic for your website. It's there's a lot of there's a lot of things that graphics can do, but it's mostly the physical aspects of marketing materials, and Photo and videos are slightly more versatile because of the fact that they can exist on multiple platforms. Like for instance, a website on social media, you can send it as part of an email blast and you can also use it as part of your physical marketing materials and it would fall into the design process. And today we're gonna really dive into the, the creative process for our video shoots because as I may have stated before, and maybe I didn't, but I'll say it now, a lot of times video production has been the backbone of this company and Jared has worked on more video shoots for us than anybody, so. Absolutely. Um, as Joe was saying before, photo, um, photos can be a great asset um, to any business. Um, and not only for their original intended asset, um, their reusability and yeah, the marketability of one set of photos um, can go so far as to be using uh, as to be used for you know three to four cam different campaigns, um, as well as uh, building a website um, and and other additional um, kind of social media outreach. So um, as far as fo uh, photo goes, you know you can really milk this stuff, and video goes even further than that. Um, I'd be willing to say as well. So I think um, just alone between the two of them, a lot of our business is video and photo based um, for a reason. Elaborating on that throughout the presentation. Yeah. All right, so um, our next slide kind of touches on our uh, kind of how we um, start the process when we when we go over um, start the process when we go over our original um, proposal process with a client, um, and we ask them if they have a vision for their business. Um, and we want to know how they visualize the business um, and if they have any, um, you know, uh, is there any way we can customize their experience um, to tailor it specifically for them? Um, and this makes our job a lot easier and it makes the end result um, easier for them to work with. It makes them happier with uh, everything, obviously, tailored, custom fit to them. Um, so, um, when it comes to marketing a brand, um, a, you know, individual, um, we need to know, you know, how you want to be showcased, um, what exactly you want us to shoot, um, and kind of like how you want, uh, the vibe you want to, uh, you want everything to have at the end, um, how you want to portray yourself, um, is super important. And we've worked with a lot of clients, um, that are, that know what they want. Um, and that's not always the case. Um, we worked with a lot of clients 
that don't know what they want. And, and that's still okay. You know, we'll help you figure it out. Um, but this step in the beginning is one of the most important, um, uh, as I've learned, um, there really is, there really needs to be a solid foundation um, between the two of us and a good understanding of, of what um, we need to know and um, what you need us to know right at the start. And that'll kind of like expedite everything. Um, so yeah, social media is the future um, for sure. If it's not already um, taking over the world. Um, and I'd go so far as to say a, a, a good video um, with good rankings on, on a site like YouTube or something um, on a website will actually boost your SEO. And when I say SEO, I mean um, website optimization. So um, your rankings on Google um, when you're searched. Um, and I read reports um, up to 30% it can boost your website um, in SEO rankings if you have a good um, functioning live video um, included within a section of a website. Um, so not only is it visually um, a great thing for you know social outreach and social media, it can also boost um, things like your SEO ranking um, and just make you look good overall. Um, Joe, you want to take the question? Yeah, a couple of things to think about whenever you're discussing the vision. It's how do you see people learning about your business? Like, how do you see them getting to you when they actually click on your ad or they click on your website if you're a, if you're a high search result? What do you want them to see? And what visuals will you use to help them understand your business? Because simply typing a bunch of words on the screen of your simply having a bunch of words on your website and no visuals is a lot different than having say a video a couple of photos maybe an infographic about like a certain percent of uh, some aspect of the business that you'd want you'd want people to know yes people have become very visual learners um especially over the past 10 years and people's attention spans are like this now scrolling through a feed um it's super 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 important and this is something i stress to all of our clients um, to create something visual and something visually pleasing um, when creating something like a website or a landing page. Um, so cool. Um, we're going to hit on the two ways to do it now. So um, there's the DIY route, which is totally applicable for um, a lot of situations, actually. I don't discourage this. Um, this is definitely important to a lot of businesses, and especially with the pandemic. Um, uh, amid us. Uh, I think this is something that a lot of people have gotten into and I fully support it. Um, I think it's super important to stay on top of um, current technology and I think everyone should create their own videos and photos. Um, and then there's the professional route, um, which is obviously hiring out a, a company like us, a marketing company or a um, production company to come in and do a spot, a commercial, a piece of social media, whatever it may be professionally. Um, and we kind of just want to compare and contrast the two and um, explain why each is uh, applicable for a certain situation. So the DIY route is obviously going to be low cost, budget friendly, you're going to be shooting with smart ca smartphone cameras or whatever is readily available. Um, most of the time it's our phones now because they can shoot great video. If, if not everyone's, I wanted to make everyone aware just in case you're not aware. If you have like the iPhone, I think it's like eight and up, you can shoot 4K, um, full 4K on an iPhone, which is amazing. Um, I still can't believe it. So uh, that's a huge, um, that's a huge uh, piece of equipment that you that you have yeah. in your pocket, you know. Um, and I tell everyone, you know, um, start making videos, whether you know, like to look at yourself or not. It's super, super important. And one day you might be able to make something like a channel for a business um, that could benefit you greatly. Um, and uh, then there's the professional route where it's going to be a little more custom as far as price goes, but this is something that we kind of pride ourselves on is um, we usually kind of ask you what, what your budget's around before we get started and we kind of break, base our pricing around that and keep it around there um, just to kind of custom and, and tailor everything to each client because we work with clients with large budgets and small budgets. so. Um, we really are all over the place. Everybody kind of thinks they walk in here and they're like, oh, no, I can't afford to hire a, a marketing team or a professional company, but we do pride ourselves on, on making it affordable. Um, 
So, and yes, obviously we do have professional gear and experience. I myself have been in the business for over 15 years and I absolutely love it. Um, I love the equipment. I love working with the people. Um, and I pride myself on, you know, never sitting behind the desk doing the same thing every day. Um, this is something I love to do and I love meeting new clients and working with you all. Um, so where the two kind of um, start contrasting is the editing. Um, and this is a big, big reason to outsource. Um, it's super time consuming and time is money. So it, editing never really gets um, any easier. You only get uh, more particular with what you do. Um, and obviously you get a little bit more speedy with it, but this is something that um, I really stress to people is, you know, it's, it's, we all have great, amazing phones now and we can all shoot great video, but it's, when it comes down to editing and post-production, it starts to get a little tricky. Um, and this is where things can start taking a little bit longer than anticipated. Um, so this is where I urge people to maybe outsource um, even material they've shot before um, to, you know, someone like us or an additional uh, post-production um, facility. Um, and I think a good point to be made between the two is um, DIY is awesome when it's executed well. And even when it's executed, you know, kind of well. Um, and I think it's super important to keep um, a um, efficient schedule with media. So if you know, if you if you hire out a business like us to create a beautiful um, landing page video for you, or um, you know, an FAQ video that answers all the questions that you get asked every day by all of these people, so that you can just stick it on your website and have it answered. Um, it's super important to follow that up, you know, with relatable, authentic content um, that you can produce on your phone yourself, you know, and, and have this um, consistent. But um, in order to do this, you know, you need to be able to produce content yourself. And I think that, you know, my point here is that each has its own application, um, but there is a there's no way you're going to be able to hire out a marketing company to produce every single thing you do. And it's important to be able to learn and take from what uh, we do together and apply it by yourself as well with a DIY application. Um, so um, I think, Joe, I think we might be ready for the next slide. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so when preparing for a professional video shoot, um, there's a ton that goes into it, obviously. I'm not going to touch on everything, um, but the equipment from the equipment we use to pre-production planning, um, a lot goes into this. You know, um, most shoots that we do, we draw out an extensive shot list um, that kind of covers our bases as far as um, uh, equipment and every single scene that we'll be shooting for the day so we can kind of prepare for anything. Um, but the content within the video is also extremely important as a marketing tool, as I used before, as I stated before. Um, like everything that we plan to shoot for the day um, is usually um, talked about before. How we can, you know, use this in different ways, and um, you know, uh, not milk everything, but you know, use everything to its full um, benefit or advantage. Um, Let's see, without a proper script or direction, the video can be jumbled, messed, never good, which is very true. Um, like I stated before, we use extensive exact shot lists um, that make our day extremely, extremely quick. Um, you know, shooting, shooting a video is something that can get so crazy um, if not done properly. And I pride our company on um, the very, very organized way we do things. Um, and I think when shooting video, staying organized is a big thing that a lot of people overlook. Um, super important. Um, and the way you want your business to be shown to your clients is of the utmost importance. Absolute factual. Um, this is uh, this is why you're bringing us in in the first place. So there's some different types of videos that we're able to showcase. Um, I'll talk about each one. So one of the ones that we do, and we've done this one a couple of different times in the last couple of months, is a business trailer. And this is 
essentially just a one to three minute overview of the business. It focuses on a couple of different generic points, kind of easy to understand. And it's most likely because of its length, there's only two platforms you could really use it on. You could post it on your website or you can post it on YouTube or you could put it on both of those places. Probably our, our most requested um, service is to create a business trailer that explains what a business does explains who works for the business, where they're located. Um, and uh, I think a, a, an important part of that is creating a um, you know, connection with the owner and the people involved in the business so that you can visually um, connect with the audience when they're, when they're uh, watching a video on, on what the business is originally. Um, nine times out of 10, you're gonna get a phone call from someone that can relate to you um, personally, you know, uh, whether it be uh, for, for any any reason through a video. So one of the other ones, I'm sure you see these all over the place, TV commercials. Have you ever wondered what goes into a 30 second TV commercial or a 60 second TV commercial? Well, these are very big productions and usually have you, you have multiple people on on the shoot. You, can, you might use a teleprompter and Jared, I'm sure you can attest to this. There's multiple cameras that are used. Multiple cameras, multiple takes, long day usually. So commercials, like I said before, they're usually either 30 or 60 seconds. Some of them can be longer if they if the business wants to invest in it being longer. And like you said, there's a lot of production that goes into it. Longer isn't always better. Um, and that's something I, I always stress to people. 60 seconds is is a, is a good amount of time. Um, and a minute video can really accomplish almost everything um, you need it to these days. And people's attention spans are really, um, I, I always stress this, are just so quick. Um, everybody's scrolling through Facebook, everybody's scrolling through Instagram. It's really hard to grab someone's attention for more than a minute. So if, if you can pack your message down to a minute, I always try and get it is to pack your message down to a minute. So of course, social media, like you, you were talking about that. So with social media, you could create any sort of video for that. It's essentially take one aspect of your business and focus on it. So for instance, say you offer, say you offer writing services and you want to focus on one aspect of that. Try and sum up your message in between 30 to 60 seconds. And then with that video, you can post it at anywhere, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, exactly. even YouTube, it could be on your website. You could even make these multiple videos, use them in a sequence to focus on that specific part of your business if you need to elaborate on things at a more specific level. So you could do, say, a two or three part series on a specific topic or even host a webinar every month. Exactly. Like Joe said, it's super important even splitting something up into 30 seconds, you know, three separate videos in 30 seconds um, is a great way um, to dive diversify your um, your media across all social platforms um, as well as you know create something that's quick and keeping people's attention um, it's it, that's a great way to, to cut down on you know long um, dragging out videos mm -hmm. and of course the last one this is mostly for like events and parties you, it's an event summary video it's essentially the same thing as a business trailer but we apply that to like an event. So if there's someone that is having a 21st birthday party and wants a video that summarizes that event, that's something we've also done before. And that was one of our recent projects that we did. More or less a uh, recap trailer um, for, you know, any live music, any, um, yeah, uh, celebration event, um, we go out and cover um, pretty much in the form of a business trailer, but this can be from anywhere to 30 to 60 seconds usually very uh, visual um, and cut to the beat of a, you know, catchy, fun song. Of course. Awesome. So this is, uh, this is my favorite section. So um, this is our, this covers our editing process. And um, this is kind of a good outline for what I go through every time I sit down to put something together for a client. Um, and it starts, like I said, in the beginning, um, with discussing where um, our client's vision is and what exactly um, they want from us or what exactly they want um, from their audience. Um, again, 
one of the most important steps here. Um, this is where we create our foundation for the entire project. Um, next comes our initial review of the footage once everything's shot. Um, I then take it all, watch every single second, um, and create what I call my selects. Um, my selects are, you know, the best pieces of what we shot for that day um, with all the fat cut off, um, laid out in a sequential order for the story to kind of take place before me with no, um, you know, effects or anything to kind of jumble uh, the uh, linear story flow. Um, or what I call my storyboard. Um, from here, I then handpick music. I, I always tell people this. I don't really think people understand. Um, I spent hours, hours going through music just for one client. Um, I, uh, you know, you, you see a commercial on television, you see a video on, on social media, and the music just seems to fit so perfectly, and it's not a coincidence. Um, this is something that takes years of um, kind of having an understanding of um, and just takes a very particular person to kind of um, find the right music. Um, this is also, uh, I want to say, right under um, our first step with uh, creating our foundation is music. You know, um, people will stay watching a certain particular video just because it has a catchy song. Um, <clears throat> and we provide our work on, on the music and, and I think it does drive a lot of the narrative when you do find a really great song to match the video. Um, and next comes text and graphics, which is pretty self-explanatory, um, kind of slapped on. Once we have our foundation, once we have music, everything's kind of locked. I actually press a physical lock button on my editing timeline to kind of lock everything in um, so that no, nothing's affected. And then I drop all the text on, I drop all the effects on. We start to have some fun. This is where we actually start to have some fun. Um, and then each clip is then um, so I know I said I took a lot of time to find the music, but I also took a lot of time to color grade. So color grading and color correcting um, are two different things. Color correcting is making the image, um, you know, look like real life. So if your sky is purple and your walls are green, you know, I'm going to wait and make the walls white. I'm going to make the sky blue and uh, make sure everything looks right before we try and make it look better. So you need to make things look like they should before you can make them look better than they should. So after we make them look like they should, we make them look better than they should by color grading. This is how we enhance the look. Um, this is how we enhance the style. And this is how we make everybody look like they're in the movies. Um, I love this process. And again, this is a lot of fine tuning and um, learning. Um, and then lastly comes our timeline review. And this is where we do a final lock on color. Again, I can literally press a lock to kind of lock everything in. Um, this is where we lock in the color effects, our assets, um, like lower thirds and little fun animations. Um, and then we export and then we deliver. And usually um, we'll have, you know, a one to two day process of going back and forth with the client um, for any revisions or changes they may have. Because, you know, once we finish, once we export, it's never finished. We, uh, there's always small revisions and changes and, and we want that to be the process because, um, you know, we're not happy until you guys are happy, until our clients are, ha are happy. Um, and that's something uh, I also pride our, our company on is, you know, making sure everybody's happy before we finalize everything. And I think that pretty much covers it, Rachel. So yeah, this was, I hope you all enjoyed our presentation and got to see life through our lens. Thank you. Um, so for now, I'd like to open the floor up to questions. If anybody has anything they'd like to ask us. We have any questions? Actually, I can't see everybody. Joe, can we get back to the? <laughs> yeah, I'll stop the screen share. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay, there, there we go. Now we can see everybody. Anybody have any questions? All right. So, do you go do you go on site to um, video people, or do you have a place that you video people? So, like in, I mean, I don't know. COVID may be separate, but in general. Yeah. So actually. Um, I want to say since March, since April. I mean, we have never been busier. Um, you know, I, I think that just with COVID and, and the way it's affected everyone, um, video has become so important as well as social media. Mm -hmm. um, we have never been busier over the past, you know, six to eight months. 
Um, but yes, we do um, go on site to um, businesses to shoot the content. Um, and we do, you know, use studio space that's kind of um, in, a, in a controlled location as well. Uh, of course, under CDC guidelines, we, we want to make sure everyone's safe. Uh, I just did a shoot um, for a company up north um, in New York, um, Maplewood area, um, and everyone on set gets tested before uh, before a shoot. Um, if if uh, if that's what makes everyone comfortable, um, we really kind of stress the uh, you know CDC guidelines. Make sure we do this the right way. Um, especially with the current situation. So yes, we do um, we do shoot on site, to answer your question, um, but we do also have some controlled studio locations that we use as well. So I just wanted to, yeah, I'm actually a client of um, Everyday Espo and um, extremely professional. They do come on site. I'm Michelle from CB Orthopedics and they um, film our patient testimonials. Um, extremely professional. Um, as you know, coming into our building, they temperature check, wear masks, um, patients are, you know, it's more than six feet away from them when they're filming. They're editing, they have changed my video production um, timeline and the quality. I can't thank you guys enough. Please um, give them a shot. They're really good at what they do. Thank you so much, Michelle. We do really appreciate that. And we love working with you guys. No problem. Anybody else? All right, well, thank you guys. I had a flashback to my American Express corporate video days. I spent 17 years doing corporate video production with them right after college from an internship right to the full-time job. So I understand everything you were talking about and uh, great job on the presentation. I think it was a great education for everybody to really understand the details that go into the video making process because people just see the final product and think, oh, that's great. Well, there's a lot behind the scenes that have to happen. Michelle, I'm so happy that, that you were on today to give them the shout out because I did call Joe the last time uh, we had you on and you gave, you gave Joe a shout out and I told him. So I'm glad that you were here together with them to give them a shout out directly. And uh, we have an, an incredible chamber with the resources and the people. And, and uh, I love the fact that we do business together. That's what it's all about. And, uh, and we'll get, more, uh, get to more testimonials at the end of the business introductions. So let's get started with that. I'm just gonna stop the recording so we can go. Uh,